Inventory management practice questions for EOQ and TBO. Let's work on this handout. I'll do a couple of questions from here. Uh, some of them are, are there for uh, extra practice, but question two is uh, sort of a, a unique one in the set. So we have Chris Lee, uh, owner of the Quality uh, Hardware Stores, reassessing his inventory for, Paul, for hammers. He sells an average of 50 hammers per, per month. Uh, so he has been placing an order to purchase 50 hammers from a wholesaler at a cost of $20 per hammer at the end of each month. However, Chris does all the ordering for the store himself and finds that this is taking a great deal of time. He estimates that the value of his time spent in placing each order uh, for hammers is $75. Okay. So what would the uh, uh, unit holding cost for hammers need to be, underlined and bolded for a reason, for Chris's current inventory possible will be optimal according to the EOQ model. Okay, that means we are going to assume that his order size of Q is the EOQ, which equals to, say, um, what's he buying? 50 hammers a month. This is an assumption. I am not way saying that the EOQ is 50, but let's assume that it is for the purposes of this exercise. So we use our EOQ formula. And so we see EOQ is 50 equals to 2 times, what's his annual demand? Annual demand, that's 50 per month times 12 months, and we get 600, right? Cost him $75 to place an order. And we solve for H, and there's the nasty little square root. Okay. Now, a couple of things that we now want to focus in on, and I, this is I, I leave this exercise to you, is got to isolate the H. First step, get rid of the square roots. So square each side. Okay. So a square, I get 2,500, and that equals to the 2, 600, times by 75, all over H. Cross multiply, isolate H, and then we get the H is equal to uh, $36 per hammer per year. Okay. So the key thing is, is just to get a little bit of algebra so that we're uh, comfortable working with the square roots, comfortable like, solving for H, isolating H, and, and that kind of thing. So that's, that's where that part of the question is somewhat important to us. Okay, so it gets a, a couple of basic algebra things that perhaps you hadn't seen for a little while and refreshes it in our memory. Next question, part B, is now we're going to actually solve for what the a, 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 HOQ is. So let's let's assume in, in part B, they tell us at eight what H is. And H is a little bit more, 20% of the acquisition cost. So H is equal to 0.2 uh, times by the $20 acquisition costs and a little bit more of a more reasonable $4 uh, per hammer per year. Okay, a little bit, a little bit more reasonable than that $36 <laughs> per hammer per year. Yikes, eh? Um, costing us more to, uh, to to order it than it, to, the holding cost is more than the cost of the hammer. It's, it's not like that never happens, but but depressing. So in this case, the EOQ is we got the two times by the 600. The $75 ordering cost hasn't changed. We divide by four, we square root it, and we end up with about 150 hammers or so. Okay. So that one's not, not, not too bad. You know, nice. It's, it's, it's quick. Uh, remembering EOQ has to be in integers, no decimals. Common mistake. Don't 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 do that. Last one. C. If the wholesaler typically delivers an order of hammers in five working days, okay, so what is that telling us? That L is equal to uh, five working days out of twenty-five days in an average month. What should the order uh, quantity be? Okay. So we have a couple of different ways this can be a little bit sneaky. Okay, uh, when we look in and we see our demand, our demand is in numbers per month. Everything is in per month. 
Um, it could be just easier just to convert everything in, into per month. So how much is five per month? Well, it's five out of the 25, which is about a fifth of the month. Okay, so that, that's maybe something that's a little bit of a, a, a wrinkle there. Okay. So now we find, okay, so uh, what reorder point? So R. We don't have any data on cycle service levels, variable demand, or anything like that. It looks like demand is what demand is. So reorder point is D bar times by L which in this case is D bar is average of uh, 50 hammers per month okay. times by the one-fifth of the month for the lead time and that's a nice easy calculation of 10 hammers All right. and there we go boom question two done 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 okay let's do question number four okay Question number four now. Okay, that's a nice, interesting question as well. Question number four. The Sofa World Supercharger Company purchases upholstery material from Jetter Textiles. The company uses 45,000 meters of material per year to make supercharger sofas. The cost of ordering material from the textile company is $1,500 per order. If it costs Sofa World Supercharger Company, uh, 70 cents or 0.7 dollars per meter annually to hold a meter of inventory determine the following a optimal number of meters of material are shorter so essentially EOQ it's dynamite EOQ so uh, EOQ and that'll equal to two times What's our annual demand? 45,000 meters of this material. Holy cow, that's a lot, eh? So 45,000 times by, how much to place an order? $1,500 divided by our holding cost of 70 cents. Don't forget the square root, that whole thing. And punch that in and we get 13,887.3 meters now you're going eh, uh, ooh, did you round that you know what you don't necessarily have to it's not like this is a part of a couch this is part of a 0.3 meters that can that could perfectly you could go and buy 0.3 meters right couldn't go buy 0.3 of a couch but you can buy 0.3 meters, right? Just like you could buy 0.3 liters. Okay, so we're good. We don't have to do any rounding stuff, right? And sort of give it our, our little bit of our common sense test. B, off the minimum inventory cost. Okay, so that means that's the cost that uh, of holding and ordering when our order sizes are the EOQ. So we plug all our associated values into our equation so the order size divided by 2 times by the holding cost plus how many how much material we buy in a year divided by the order size to get the number of orders per year times by how much it costs us to place an order so just plug and play there and all that equals to $9721 and 11 cents okay so minimum total inventory just means we're finding the cost using EOQ as the order size optimal number of orders per year okay well that's not too bad we would just uh, essentially isolate this value right there And that equals two. So this value here, which represents the number of orders, equals to 3.24, or you know, roughly three orders per year. Okay, so it's kind of like three orders per year. Most of the time, every so often, we place four orders in a year, kind of thing, right? Obviously, a quarter of an order. You either placed the order, or you didn't place the order. 
Okay, sorry, that's that's C. Alphabet's a little bit lost on me right now. Now we do D. Time between orders. We look at our aid memoir or or a formula sheet or what have you. E O Q. It looks like E Q Q. I know. E O Q divided by D. And so we have our order size of thirteen thousand eight hundred eighty-seven point three meters divided by our annual demand of forty-five thousand. That equals to about 0 0.3086 years. People typically don't talk about that like that. So you can convert it to months or weeks. And so I converted it to months and you get about 3.7 months. So I just divided by 12 to convert to months. So it's something that people could relate to. People usually don't talk about, you can talk about a third of a year or 30% of a year. Eh, it's not too goofy. You, you know, little over three months, little under four months kind of thing is probably a little bit uh, more intuitive for, for people to follow. Okay, whipping right along. I know, I know. Let's do question number five. Just to kind of round out in, in case you need uh, talkies to go with the answer key. The food place uh, supermarket stocks munchkin cookies. Demand for munchkin cookies is 5,000 boxes per year. Ooh, okay, D equals to 5,000. It costs the store $80 per order of munchkins. Okay, so S is $80. Costs uh, four cents per, per box per month to keep the cookies in stock. So uh, $0.04. Per box per month. Hmm. 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 Oh. Interesting. Uh, once an order for Munchkins is placed, it is, takes four days to receive the order from a food distributor. L equals to four days. Determine the following. A, optimal order size. EOQ. What could EOQ be? So plug all that in. Uh, da, 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 two, five thousand times by eighty. All over. Now it's four cents per box per month. We got to times that by twelve to get the cost per year. Remember, H is an annual or holding cost. H is an annual holding cost. H is an annual holding cost. Okay. For later, when you go, ah, where'd the 48 come from? Ah! Now you know. And uh, we plug that through, we get 1290.91, 99, sorry, and that's roughly equal to 1291 boxes. Oh, last one. B B B B B B B B B B B B Reorder point R equals to D bar L. No talk of safety stock, cycle service levels, probabilities of a stock out or anything like that. So uh, no safety stock issues, right? No no implication that there's variability in demand. So it's just right straight to the simple R formula for reorder point. So R equals to now we have, uh, takes four days, so L is four. It would be awesome if we had daily numbers. Okay, so we have 5,000 boxes. Excuse me. 5,000 boxes per year, 365 days per year. So that gets us our D bar value times that by the four, that's our lead time, and we get 54.79 boxes. Of course, that makes no sense. You're either ordering a box or you're not. And so we get roughly 55 boxes. And that seals up five, right? So the calculation part, I, I will put up, but we'll put the warning out. The calculation part, Fairly straightforward. We're plugging stuff in. We've got set formulas. We pull the formulas. 
the, anal the analysis, the what if, uh, the policy analysis and, and the managerial implications, those require us to have an understanding for the formulas. And, and I mean it, there's no set of questions that are easily memorizable that will solve for that. Any, I could search through the Wall Street Journal, uh, any new you know, financial post, come up with an issue and say, hey, what if, what if this happens? What are the implications on dot, dot, dot? An increase in the carbon tax, for instance, right? What is the implications on dot, dot, dot? And now we sort of roll through where that affects things, okay? So it can be tricky, and it's limited by the universe, which is limitless. So you really want to get a feel for the formulas. Doing the calculations help us get a feel for those formulas, but we don't want to lose sight of the relationships and, and get too much into the rote calculation, okay? Now, rote calculation is good. It'll be on the midterm, and that, that's a, a nice solid basis uh, so, so that, uh, you know, there's things you won't, you can prepare for and be assured of and then as you learn it better and learn it more completely and deeper you can then deal with the policy questions because you just never know what shape they'll be as I said it's it's limitless